Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Beach Fossils LP, Clash the Truth. This is the long-awaited sophomore full-length LP from the New York band Beach Fossils, whose self-titled debut pretty much got the ball rolling on a pretty big trend in underground indie rock and pop that's been just rolling and rolling and rolling over the past few years. And that trend is just steady, guitar-driven, and echoey dream pop, kind of like the light beach-visiting pastel-colored cousin to the indie rock we once knew. Typically on the albums that have featured this style, the vocals tend to be kind of apathetic. The guitar tones are usually pretty stringy, trebly, with shimmering echoes on them, maybe a little bland in sound. Strum patterns, drum patterns, melody as well from the guitar and the vocals too, they don't really tend to be that, I guess, sort of distinct or, or flavorful when it comes to composition. To me, this sound has always been fine for a few songs or like a single, but it all kind of tends to blend together in this really sort of unrewarding and kind of boring way when I listen to an entire album album of it from beginning to end. This has kind of been the tune that I've been singing whenever I've talked about a record in this style, whether it be in a review or a Why You Know review or a blog post, whatever. And because of this sort of bias and this general uninterest in music that has this sound and this style, I wasn't anticipating, expecting much from this new Beach Fossils LP. Even though I did like the last EP that they put out, which actually had Wild Nothing on it. However, I have to say with this new album, I'm pleasantly surprised, uh, not only because I think the band is writing better tunes, the production is better on this LP, but I just did not anticipate the kind of variety that Beach Fossils would bring on Clash the Truth. And the detail too, I mean for one, the vocals on this LP are way more audible than on any of their previous efforts. I mean, they're, they're no longer a prisoner to the reverb and the echo that they constantly use throughout every single song. The melodies on this LP pop pop, the playing, and the instrumentation overall is just more energetic. I've seen the band live a couple times, they rock their songs out way harder in person than they are on record, and I'm just feeling the interplay, I'm feeling the momentum, I'm feeling the grooves on this album. There's actually more than one guitar tone on this album too. There's thinner tones, thicker ones, some distortion here and there, acoustic guitar, and all of these additions are being brought into this new record while the band kind of still sticks to its signature sound. The mood that this band usually brings to the table is still there, the accessibility is still there, simplicity is still a key feature to their sound. What Beach Fossils does across this 35 minute record is not all that technical or flashy, not profound, not even, I guess I would say, novel at this point now that we have a bunch of albums popping up in this very same style every single year, but on Clash the Truth, Beach Fossils does some embracing, some soul searching of their influences and just end up with a more solid record because of it. The introductory track on here is a bit of post-punk kind of Joy Division influence and has these very catchy chanted group vocals, kind of a mantra. It's a very lively start for this typically sleepy band. And though the song is short, along with a lot of others on here, Beach Fossils kind of have this way of keeping their songs so stripped down, yet so energetic, that the brevity feels so complete anyway, in the same way that a punk band like Wire would. The band kind of continues to put a defining characteristic on every single song on this LP, like the track Generational Synthetic, which has this galloping snare drum, this descending vocal melody that's sticking in my head, as well as some very melodic guitar phrasing over the chorus, and the acoustic track on here that comes shortly after Sleep Apnea is a decent song as well. It's a little short, it's the one moment on this LP that I feel like could have been fleshed out more, but I like the very sort of dreamy psychedelic textures that the band brings on this track. The song really feels tired in the way that a lack of sleep would, would make you Feel. But even songs on this LP that feel well within Beach Fossil's comfort zone have this sort of new vibrance to them with just harder playing and some more detail like the song Careless which has these burning guitar leads all over the place, a danceable drum beat, all these sweet young male group vocals. 
Mm. The song is simultaneously sleepy, intoxicating, and poppy and exciting. The tracks on this LP, it's not like Beach Fossils is pumping out these 15 minute epic progressive monsters, but Clash the Truth features the band's most fleshed out material yet, with melodies that actually stick out and are memorable, and verses and choruses that actually kind of feel like they're coming from different spots. There's contrast there. It just doesn't feel like this one endless, sleepy, tired, boring blob of a song. The band continues to put a distinct characteristic into every single song on this LP, like the song Burn You Down, which has this tick-tock tight dance beat. The song Birthday has some sharp biting distortion on it, but it washes over the whole track in this kind of my bloody Valentine worship sort of way. And the song In Vertigo actually features Kazu Makino from Blonde Redhead on vocals. She slides into the song very nicely, along with the male vocals that the band usually provides. It's sweet to see them kind of tribute Blonde Redhead because they're no doubt an influence. I love the stringy layers of guitar on the song Caustic Cross. They're soft, but they scream out confidently against these very fill-filled drum beats, which hit me and remind me that, man, just overall the drumming on this LP is so much better. There are a few drones on here, a few interludes, which are placed very nicely, not taking away from the momentum of the album, and the sounds that they actually bring forward are very pretty, adding to the dreamy quality of the album. This LP was put together really well. Beach Fossils actually conceived this album with just a grander point of view. They weren't just trying to put together a bunch of singles that ended up sounding like crap when you put them together into an album. Overall, all the band sticks to its light and, and youthful sound, but feels mature and detailed enough to the point where you can actually take it seriously, but not too seriously, because really it's it's all about fun. Maybe you could make the argument that this LP is too samey samey for its own good. I'm sure that there are going to be some people who are turned off a little bit by the band's constant, constant dreamy sound but I still find this LP personally to be diverse enough to be enjoyed and a really interesting crossroads of things like indie rock, shoegaze, dream pop, as well as punk rock. The vocals could have been maybe a bit more distinct and that of course, you know, I would love to hear them lay on more melody in the future, but there, there's not really any huge complaints from me. Honestly, I'm feeling a decent to strong eight on this LP. If you've given it a listen, what did you think? Did you love it? hate it. Why? And what do you think I should review next? Anthony Fantano, Beach Fossils, Forever. Forever.